So with the Common App, you only need to use one system to apply to multiple colleges and universities. Over 900 colleges and universities use the Common App. There are two main parts that you fill out, a common set of questions and each college's specific questions. The best part about this is that you only have to fill out the common questions one time. And if you wanna start working on the common application in your junior year this year, you can start filling it out now. Your account will roll over and save till next year so that you can apply to colleges in your senior year and already have information filled out, which is so great. Um, just a note, if you have any questions during our presentation or after, please use the Q&A feature and we'll answer them at the very end, okay? All right, so the most important thing is to start out very organized and gather some materials. So before you start the application, you'll need to gather all the materials you'll need to complete the application. Some of that includes high school information. So you'll need to know your high school's GPA scale, that we don't rank our students, class size. Um, and if you have any questions about any of that, please see your counselor for more details on this information. We're gonna be referring you back to your counselors a lot in this presentation, but it is important that um, you do work with your counselor so that she can help you as fast as she can with this. You'll need an unofficial copy of your high school transcript. You can certainly get that off of eSchool data off the student portal, or you can ask your counselor for a copy of your unofficial high school transcript. You'll be needing this to list the courses you're taking in your senior year. So just keep in mind that the courses you're gonna be taking next year, you won't know exactly until next year to make sure that you're getting all the courses. So make sure you fill that out in your senior year. Some colleges will also ask you to self-report your full academic record nine through 12 in the courses and grade section. And you'll need your transcript definitely to complete that section. You'll also need parent information. So now's the time to chat up your parents and ask them some questions. You're gonna be asked to share some basic information about one or more parents, including their occupation, their job title, educational level they received. If your parent attended college, we'll need to know the name and location of that college, as well as what degree they received and when. So it's a little fact finding about your parents. Some people already know this information and sometimes they find out brand new when they're asking these questions. You'll also need to gather together a list of all your academic honors. You can include up to five academic honors you've received during high school. You'll need to include the honors title, when you received it, the level of recognition you received. So whether it was recognition from the school, it was a regional recognition or a national recognition. You'll also need a list of your activities. So you'll have to recall, and it's your activities during high school. So, you know, you only have room for 10 activities. You don't want to start listing middle school activities. You want the relevant activities that you've had over the four years of high school. These activities include family responsibilities, like for those students that even babysit a younger sibling, you can add that. That's certainly a responsibility that takes up time. Any jobs that you've had, volunteer work, clubs, sports, hobbies, and so much more. And again, sometimes you'll need a little bit of help with how to word things, and we're happy to do so for you. A copy of your test scores and dates, if you're using them. So if you are going to use SAT or ACT in your application, and of course, you can always discuss it with your school counselor, whether you want to. A lot of schools went test optional this year. There will be maybe some schools next year that will require them. So that's something to think about. You will have the option to self-report your scores for the standardized exams, like the ACT and the SAT that you've taken or the ones you plan to take. Don't forget though, you'll need to send official score reports to the colleges that require them. And we'll definitely discuss this again with you next year. No need to memorize this. So we're gonna take you step-by-step step through all the parts of the application. The first step in completing your common application is to create an account. Creating an account is super easy. It should only take a few minutes. Choose your registration type, and for you, it will be first-time students. Provide your login credentials like you always have to do. You create a username and a password. Make sure you use an email address that you check often. I stress this because colleges will communicate with you through that email address and will the Common App as well, just in case they have questions and they need to get in touch with you. Also, you have to complete your registration information like your name, your address, your phone number, your date of birth. Be sure to use your legal name that is on your school records, because when colleges get your transcript from us, they need to match it to the right person. So keep that in mind, no nicknames or anything like that. I'm gonna show you a brief video on how easy it is to create an account. Hi, it's Stephanie from Common App. Let's take a look at how you can create a first year Common App account. To create a first year Common App account, use the Create Account button on commonapp.org. 
First, you're asked what kind of account you want to create. You can use the information icon to learn more about each type of account. For this video, we're going to create a first year student account. First, you'll enter your email address and choose a password. Make sure to choose an email you check often. This email is how Common App and colleges you're applying to will get in touch with you. You'll also use this email to log into your account each time. Next, you'll enter your name, phone number, and date of birth. Be sure to use your legal name as it appears on official documents. This will help colleges to match documents with the correct applicant. Then, use the Add Address button to enter your address. First, select the country, and then type in your address. Select your address from the results given. If you don't see your address in the list, you can enter the correct information manually. Next, you're asked if you are currently based in a European Union country and when you plan to start college. Finally, you'll review and affirm some statements and a common app privacy policy. Please take some time to carefully read and check the affirmation before continuing. When you're ready, use the create account button to complete the process. And that's it. Now that you understand how to create a common app account, you're ready to get started. Okay, so see how super easy that was. Now we're gonna talk about adding colleges. And this is where you start to build your college list. Once you've created that account and explored all the colleges that take the common application, you are ready to start adding colleges. The college search tab is where you'll search and add colleges you want to apply to. If you have a school in mind, you can search by the college's name. If you want to keep exploring, there's more filters that you can use. Some of those filters you can search by state or country, distance from a certain zip code. So if you want to put distance from your zip code in Pleasantville, enrollment term, application deadline, application fees, writing requirements, standardized testing policies. This is where you could look for schools that are testing optional and letters of recommendation requirements. Once you've added a college in your dashboard, you can see it in your dashboard and your My Colleges tab. Once you've submitted a college, just so that you know, you will not be able to remove that school from your colleges list. But if you haven't submitted it, you can use it as a working list and add it as you need to. Just a quick side note about application fees. While some colleges may charge an application fee, others have no fee to apply, and many will offer fee waivers under certain circumstances. So if you feel like the fee will inhibit or prevent you from applying to that college, please see your counselor and she can see if you meet the eligibility criteria for a fee waiver. Now I'm going to play a quick video to show you how easy it is to add a college. The My Colleges tab is where you'll see all of the colleges you've added to your list. For each college, you will answer college-specific questions, invite and manage recommenders, complete any additional supplements, and submit your application. The college's information page provides detail about its requirements. Some of these requirements include deadlines, standardized testing policy, and recommendation requirements. The college's contact information is also included. In the application section, you'll answer their specific questions, invite recommenders, and submit. Take some time to review this section to understand your workload. The number and types of questions and recommender requirements are unique to each college. Some colleges may also require a writing supplement or portfolio. You'll access those sections in the My Colleges tab as well. Keep in mind, writing supplements and portfolios are completed and submitted separately from your application. Be sure to double check your dashboard to make sure you've submitted all required items for a college. Common App is here to support you along the way. You can find help at any time by visiting commonapp.org slash help. Okay, so now you see how easy it is to add a college. We are gonna take you step-by-step step through this whole application. I'm gonna refer you now to Ms. Winston who will take you through the remainder of this application. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas. So the Common App allows you to link other individuals to your account that might be necessary to support your application. Many colleges will require letters of recommendation. Each college has their own recommendation requirements, however. Some colleges may need two teacher recommendations and some may not want any. In the fall, we will work with students to match their Common App accounts with their Naviance accounts, which will automatically populate their school counselor's contact information. 
Students will also request letters of recommendations from teachers directly through Naviance. Prior to doing all this, students will need to complete the FERPA release authorization. FERPA stands for Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. By completing the release authorization, students give the school permission to send their educational records to the colleges they are applying to. They will also be asked to waive the right to review their letters of recommendation, keeping them confidential. And this maintains that the letters have integrity and colleges will view them as legitimate recommendations. I'm gonna play a quick video explaining this process. Hi, it's Shauna from Common App. Let's review how to complete the FERPA release authorization and what that means for your application. FERPA stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. FERPA is a federal law that protects the privacy of student education records. It also gives you the right to review letters of recommendation after you enroll. Check out our info sheet on Common App Ready for more information about FERPA. Completing the FERPA release authorization is the first step in the recommendation process. Once you've completed the authorization, you can begin inviting your counselor and teachers. To access the release authorization, go to any college in the My Colleges tab. Then go to the Recommenders and FERPA section. At the top of the page, you'll see the FERPA section and a button you can use to access it. It's important to note that the FERPA release is only completed once. Your answer will apply to all the colleges on your list. The first page of the FERPA release gives you some more information about how FERPA works. You'll need to select the affirmation at the bottom before continuing. Next, you'll need to authorize the release of your school records to the colleges you're applying to through Common App. Then, you'll choose whether to waive your right to review any recommendations and documents submitted to a college. Waiving your right states that you do not intend to read your recommendations after enrolling at your future college. This can help reassure colleges that the recommendation letters are candid and truthful. Note that you will never be able to review recommendations from a college you were either not accepted to or a college you chose not to enroll in. Also, some recommenders may refuse to write a letter unless you waive your rights. Check with your counselor or teachers to see if any of them follow such a policy. If you still have questions, it's always a good idea to discuss your decision with your counselor, another school official, or a parent or legal guardian. Finally, you will check the affirmation at the bottom and provide your signature. Once you complete the authorization, you can begin inviting and a So I'll stop right there. If a college uh, allows you additional recommenders, Students can invite other recommenders directly through the Common App. Now, typically these will be non-academic recommenders. Other recommenders might be uh, coaches, employers, etc. cetera. Uh, see your counselor if you need help uh, with this process in adding other recommenders. In terms of parents being connected to uh, Common App accounts, the only time parents will need to submit a form is if you are applying using a college's early decision deadline. They will fill a part of your early decision agreement. Your counselor will also have to complete an agreement through Naviance. So it's important to make your counselor aware if you are planning to apply ED. And now, one of the most salient points to take with you tonight is the importance of understanding requirements. It is extremely important that you understand and keep track of each college's unique application requirements. Each college, when you need to complete the common app, app, question, app, app questions, beyond that, however, the requirements will vary. Probably the most important requirement to be mindful of is deadlines. It's always a good idea to cross-reference with the college's admissions website directly for application deadlines, as well as deadlines for scholarship and financial aid consideration. Many colleges will 
require that you pay application fees before you can submit the application. If you believe you'll have difficulty paying application fees, please see your counselor to see if you're eligible for a fee waiver. Most colleges will require you to submit a personal essay, although some do not. In addition to a personal essay, some colleges will even require you to submit writing supplements. Some colleges require that you self-report your high school courses and grades. It's very important to understand the test policy of each college. Some colleges require standardized test scores, some have a test optional policy, and some don't require any test scores. Meet with your counselor if you're unsure whether to apply test optional or to submit your test scores. A portfolio may be required if you're applying to a special program. And lastly, recommendations, as I mentioned earlier, some require two and some require none. I'm gonna play a quick video to review those requirements and where you can find them in the Common App. Hi, it's Miriam from Common App. Let's take a look at the layout of the My Colleges tab and the information you're asked to enter. The My Colleges tab is where you complete all the information for the colleges you have added to your list. In this tab, you'll answer college specific questions, invite and manage recommenders, and submit applications. Select a school to open their information. The first page you'll see is their college information page. Here you'll find contact info, college specific requirements, and more. Next, you'll see the application section. Here's where you complete school specific questions, invite recommenders, and submit. Each college's question section is made up of different subsections. Because all colleges can choose what kind of questions to ask, this section will look different for every college. In the Recommenders and FERPA section, you will complete the FERPA release authorization and manage your recommendations. For more information on how this process works, check out our video about it. The final section is where you can submit your application. If all required questions are complete, we will show an option to review and submit. If there are any incomplete questions, you'll find information and links to take you to those sections. Some schools may also include a writing supplement. If so, you'll find that section below the application. Keep in mind that any writing supplement is completed and submitted separately from the application. If a college asks you to submit a portfolio, you'll find that section below the writing supplement. And that's it. Now that you know more about the My Colleges tab, you're ready to get started. So just to review, you can find and review each college's requirements on the My Colleges tab or using the requirements grid which lists the requirements of every college on the Common App. You can also search the writing requirements of a specific college. Now, focusing in on one specific requirement, the personal essay. Writing your personal essay will probably be the most time consuming part of the application. The Common App essay must be between 250 and 650 words. Many colleges will also want you to answer college specific questions, and some colleges will require you to complete additional writing supplements. We'll play a quick video on writing your Common App essay and other writing requirements. Hi, it's Shauna from Common App. Let's take a look at the writing section and what questions you're asked. The first section is the personal essay. Each college can choose whether to require the personal essay. At the top of the section, you can see which colleges on your list require it. However, you have the option to submit the personal essay to any college, even if it's not required. To begin work on your essay, first pick a topic. There are seven different options you can choose from. Be sure to take some time to review each one. Your personal essay should be 250 to 650 words, inspired by the prompt you've chosen. You can enter text into the box, paste it from another source, or upload it using Google Drive. Note that if you use Google Drive, the system will extract the text from the document and paste it into the text box. As you work, keep formatting in mind. You will only be able to use the formatting available in the text box, like bolding and italicizing. Unsupported formatting like images and tables cannot be included. Common App automatically saves your work every 90 seconds, but it's a good idea for you to save your work regularly as well. 
Okay, so I want to let you know that students will be working with their English teachers. Department is coordinated with Ms. Wendy Fried of students consulting workshops Ms. through Schoology. Workshops will be held on. I think Ms. Winston's audio is going in and out. Um, she was referring yeah, to. Oh, okay. Sorry, your, your audio is going in and out. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, just so that you know, um, Ms. Freed will be doing workshops June 1st and 2nd during activity period. So sign up through your Schoology page. She's basically going to be giving you some information about how to kind of put yourself in the frame of mind on how to write the essay. So it's really important you attend those sessions. Able to, okay. And getting to the last step, just checking in. Audio okay? Yes. Okay, so the last step is to submit to review your application, pay the application fee, and submit. And then congratulations, you've applied to college. So just a last quick video to review the process. Submitting your college application is an exciting accomplishment. With Common App, it's a simple three-step process. To submit an application to a college, you must complete all sections of the Common App tab, the college's specific questions, and invite your recommenders. Go to the Review and Submit screen of that college, and then select the Review and Submit button. If the personal essay isn't required by the college, you can choose whether to include it with your application. First, you'll review and make sure you're satisfied with your application. If necessary, you can exit the submission process to make changes and return later. Next, you'll move to the payment process. If you indicated that you qualify for a fee waiver, you'll skip this step. If the college has an application fee, you'll be taken to the payment and processing screens. Paying the application fee does not submit your application. You'll still need to return to the Common App to submit your application. In the final step, you'll review some affirmations and sign and date your application. Then select the submit button to finish. You will see a confirmation screen and confetti to congratulate you on this accomplishment. Common App is here to support you along the way. You can find help at any time by visiting commonapp.org slash help. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully you guys got a little bit of a taste of what that common application looks like. I think the best way to really know what it looks like is to actually make yourself an account, log in and go through some of the questions, um, figure out what questions you have and bring it to your counselor. I mean, the good news is that all of the, basically the questions on the common app are ones you have the answers to. And as Ms. Winston had said, the hardest part will certainly be doing your essay. That's the most time consuming and probably the part that you're gonna put the most effort into. I'm hoping you all found this presentation useful and it will help you on your journey to applying to college. In the fall, we as counselors do host common application workshops with any seniors who would like to. And we also make individual appointments with our students at any time to answer any questions that you have. We do have a question or two, so we'll take the time to now answer any questions. Um, so the question is, can colleges view your Common App progress, information, questions, drafts, activities, et cetera, before you submit the application in the fall? And the answer actually is that they cannot. Um, they won't see anything until you actually submit it. So once you submit your application to the college, they are able then to open it up and view it, but they cannot view it beforehand. Any other questions anyone may have? Okay, well, I don't see any other questions at this time, but obviously we are not going anywhere. So if you do have any questions for your counselor, make sure you make those appointments. I know a lot of you have met with us already and you will certainly meet with us again in the fall, but before you leave for the school year and you start on your journey of looking at colleges over the summer and whatnot, 
please stop by and ask any questions you may have, okay? I wanna thank everybody for attending tonight and I hope that you found this useful. Um, have a wonderful rest of the evening and we will definitely- Thank you all, yes. Well, soon. Take care, everybody. Thank you.